And our first guest on this week's show is Mr. Matthew Schistler. He is the CEO of a company called Cord Blood America, stock symbol CBAI. Matt, good to see you again. Hey, Don. Good to see you. Well, Matt, you know, we've been on the air for about 13 years. We've been following your company probably at least half of that period of time. Right. I'm really glad to be reinitiating coverage of the company again. Uh, for those who might have missed you before, though, tell us again what you do. Cord Blood America, we're, we privately bank umbilical cord blood stem cells for families, and that means that families pay us to store the stem cells for their child's use and only their child's use. And, you know, Don, I wanted to actually congratulate you on over 600 shows. Congratulations on Money TV. And I really enjoyed doing this interview with you because not only does it communicate to investors, but the, the content that's created that we use on our corporate investor relations website. So it, it, it kind of is, it becomes a picture in time as to where Core Blood America is. And you can go back for the four or five years we've been working together right. and look at where we've been Sure. until where we are today. It's not a blind press release or a fax. It really puts a face with the company, and I'm very, very appreciative to work with you on this. And, and you're the face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, so a couple of years ago, there was a major discovery of something, and I want to make sure I get this right, cord blood-derived embryonic-like stem cells. They're known in the industry as CBEs, and uh, these are stem cells that come from umbilical cord blood, which you folks are collecting and storing. They possess a lot of the um, same characteristics that the controversial embryonic stem cells do without any of the controversy. Uh, can you comment on that? Yeah, I mean, those core blood-derived stem cells do contain a lot of the characteristics of embryonic stem cells. It doesn't end the debate of embryonic versus um, adult stem cells, which cord blood stem cells are adult stem cells. It doesn't end the debate, but it really swings the debate you know, in, into a direction of working with adult stem cells and adult stem cells only. So it's a very, very good source of stem cells, and uh, we're glad that discovery was made. Okay. Well, now the Obama administration has committed government funding of stem cell research. I mean, even though they're talking both about adult and embryonic in that regard, uh, still overall those statements towards the industry must help the industry overall. Sure, and it, it does. Now, what's interesting is back in January, you know, obviously the Obama administration came out with a bang and said that we were going to fund stem cells and embryonic stem cell research and development, and that's good in a number of ways for the United States economy, which obviously the economy is a tremendous issue these days. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, done is that whether it is emb embryonic or adult stem cells, the largest bank in, you know, in the country and frankly in the world is the United States Bank, and if they can put their money behind the stem cell research, what that allows for companies like Core Blood America is for companies to capture stem cell revenues and patent technologies in the United States which thereby they can license around the world. Now, see, if the United States doesn't fund United States-based stem cell companies, we're, we're kind of, it's kind of, like I said before, it's kind of like building a house without a hammer. Right. We have less tools than companies overseas that are getting funded by their governments for stem cell research. They get ahead of us in patenting technologies, and all of a sudden we're paying licensing fees mm -hmm. overseas. So you're watching money flow away from the U.S. economy. So it's a very, very good economical step that the administration... Now, we have to wait to see the funding get dispersed, but so far so good. Now, I always like to disclaim when we have you on the program before the activists go out and pick up a hammer, <laughs> uh, you're not dealing with in any way, shape, or form the controversial embryonic stem cells, correct? No, that is correct. We store umbilical cord blood stem cells, which are after the baby's born, they're collected from the umbilical cord and cryogenically frozen. Okay. Now, I remember when my daughter was born, she was born uh, eight years ago, and my wife and I did not have this option presented to us. Uh, so of course, uh, her umbilical cord blood was lost, it was thrown away. What are the efforts being taken to let more parents know about this here, you know, eight, nine years later? Well, it's interesting, I mean, eight, nine years ago, there was just a, a handful of companies doing it. Now there's 30 in the United States, and we're the fourth largest, we believe. Um, the, the tracking numbers say so. The, a lot of the companies are doing direct-to-consumer advertising, so you can't pick up a pregnancy magazine without seeing an advertisement with it. And you're starting to see that, you know, across the board, whether it's not in, whether it's internet magazines, direct mail, or so forth. Many companies use the, the pharmaceutical sales model by getting their information into doctors' offices, but still today, only four percent of the United States birth, and this is a rough number store their stem cells. Mm -hmm. um, we employ a different strategy in that we work hand in hand with health insurance providers so that when a family becomes pregnant and they indicate to their health insurance provider, okay, we're pregnant, the provider provides them, um, you know, pregnancy information, all the things they need about pregnancy to, to basically walk them through the pregnancy. Well, we're part of that information and we become the exclusive provider for that insurance company to store the stem cells. And so, 
Yeah, it's 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 taking some time to educate, but uh, it's it's starting to get there. Now, uh, what does the company charge for for collection, and then of course uh, annual storage? Uh, how does that work? Uh, at the time of birth, the total charge is two thousand seventy-five dollars. Now, this includes the collection kit, it includes medical shipping, it includes um, the processing and storage of stem cells. And then after that, it's $125 a year. So it's a, it's a large upfront investment, but then it's $125 a year to keep it stored for 18 years. The large upfront investment obviously can be financed. We work with a number of different finance companies um, to do so. So we try to make it as affordable as possible for parents to store the stem cells. Now you mentioned you're involved in the information um, dissemination from the health insurance providers, are they starting to come on board, starting to cover the collection and storage? You know, they're not yet. Um, we have done uh, work with their actuaries, and what we're starting to see is, is and this is, this is really the tipping point in the industry, Don, as more stem cell therapies get to market, more insurance companies are going to put the, basically do the numbers, go through the numbers and say, it's going to cost us less to pay for stem cell collection than it is to currently treat diseases. Sure. And, you know, stem cells are used to battle cancers and leukemias, cancer and leukemia mostly, um, blood and immune disorders and so forth. But in clinical trials right now, our studies for juvenile diabetes, our studies for cerebral palsy, you start getting these to market and then you start, uh, you know, then the much larger percentage of the populations may use their stem cells for curative purposes. The insurance companies are going to say, what's going to cost us more? You know, treating someone with juvenile di diabetes for the rest of their life. Right or having a stem cell cure in place. And that's when you, that's the tipping point of the industry, and that's what us and all the other companies in the industry are building towards. Fascinating information. Again, Cord Blood America, stock symbol CBAI, and our toll-free number from anywhere in the world for free information, 888-259-4449. Now, you mentioned a moment ago that you figured you're about the fourth largest uh, company in your space in the United States. Uh, you said there were about 30. I mean, is, is the space kind of crowded? It is. Um, you know, it's interesting. When we came in, we started our company in 2003. Now, we bought a company that started in 1995. So we have a history of 14 years now under Core Blood America in the industry, and that's one of the longest runs in the industry. Mm -hmm. But when we came in in 2003, we were the 16th largest. There's only 16 of us. Since then, another, I would say another 20 to 25 have come in. Some have gone out of business. Some we've bought. But we've gone from number 16 to number four in a matter of six years. And wow. so, yeah, it, it's gotten a little crowded. But what you're seeing are three major players, three gazelles. I like consider us one of the gazelles, fast-growing companies, mm -hmm. and about 20 to 25 you know, small localized players. Now, you recently made an announcement. I thought this was interesting. You retired a pretty significant piece of debt. Yeah, you know, it, we've been following us for, for you know, four or five years now, Don. You saw that we had you know, virtually zero revenues at one point. Now, we raised a tremendous amount of money in debt, some in debt, some in equity. Okay. And that money allowed us to buy the other companies that we've bought. We've made three acquisitions in the last uh, three years um, that allowed us to grow organically. And now in 2009, I've said it before and I'll say it again, now is the time to deliver the balance sheet. You know, we're very, very close to running cash flow positive. And so and have, in order to have a healthy company, there's three key pillars. One is organic growth two's acquisition, and the third is to have a healthy balance sheet. And, and so what we need to do as an organization, because we believe we're going to turn that corner, um, is to get rid of all the debt, to not have this overhang, if you will, this overbearing debt on our books. It's kind of like paying off your mortgage. You can really shoot from there, and that's what we, this is the tipping point year for Cord Blood America. Cord Blood America, CBAI. Uh, Matt, the story just uh, gets more and more interesting. Then come in. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks, Don. Take care.